Hello, folks. Welcome back to the podcast, Britt Canal, West Hancock Athletic Podcast, uh, episode 28. Uh, if you missed the last one, episode 27, I had Coach Mark Sanger on with me uh, talking about a football state championship. So check that one out if you haven't already. Tonight, though, Mr. Jason Harley down in Florida, correct? Correct. Tallahassee, you bet. You bet. So thanks for coming on, Jason. I appreciate it. I'm excited for this one. There's going to be a lot of cool stories he's going to tell here in a little bit. <laughs> But uh, thanks for having me. Uh, uh, Go ahead. Sorry, Dan. No, no, all you. I was just going to say after those last two, uh, as I was telling Dan right before this, having hit two home runs, I just I just want to get a hit. I just want to get at least a double or something. Get on. Um, But yeah, check out those two if you all haven't. Yep, I I think you'll hit at least a double or if not a triple tonight. So we'll be (laughs) all right there. Uh, like always, I want to recognize my sponsors. Uh, I was telling Jason that it's funny. I said I only have nine sponsors tonight. We're getting into double digits most nights. Uh, but like always, money's going to the Sanger Legacy Fund, which is one of the main points of doing this. So I appreciate all of the sponsors out there. Uh, Ewing Funeral Home and Monument Company, Mary Jo's Hobo House and Catering, Jay Hiscox of State Farm. He got the shaft tonight. You can barely see his logo over my shoulder. Uh, First State Bank, Mojo Productions, Chuck Boozman. Justin Charbonneau and Daniel's Auto Collision. And then I also have one last sponsor tonight. She's doing one last episode for me. Uh, she's from my church down here in Indianola. Her name's Jan Rosga. She wrote a book called Raw Survival, A Practical Guide uh, Living Through Loss. A week after graduating from high school, her 18-year-old son David smoked a synthetic drug called K2. He took his life 90 minutes later. And Jan recently had this book published about her grief journey, again called Raw Survival. If your life's been shattered by the death of a loved one or you have a similar story, you'll find a lot of comfort and encouragement from this book. I've read it a couple times now. It's a great read. I have a video I'll post about her story, gives a little more detail about the book, and then links to purchase the book as well. Uh, Like we said, football wrapped up a couple weeks ago. Uh, Coach Mark Sanger's team took home state championship number four. I had some fun with some people on this one because the state association counts this as just our third state title because the first one was just Brit and not Wes Hancock. Uh, but at the game, everyone was holding up four fingers at the end when they announced it was our third. So uh, yeah, we beat Grundy Center 19 to 14 in the state championship game. So congrats to the Eagles on another amazing season and sounds like another good one's coming up in 2022. Uh, winter sports with uh, starting with boys basketball, coach Jay Hiscox. Uh, they've literally had like three practices this season because of football. Uh, but they played last night against Lake Mills and only lost by six, and they're the defending conference champs. Uh, and that was without Braden Walk, one of our starters who broke his hand in the championship game. So uh, they're down a starter, and still I think they're going to be pretty darn good. Tomorrow night they go to Eagle Grove, and then Saturday the 4th they are at Esther, or playing host to Esterville Lincoln Central, the Mighty Midgets, and I'll be at that game. We're heading to Buffalo Center this weekend. Uh, girls basketball coach Paul Sonius. Paul was recently named to the Iowa Basketball Hall of Fame, so congrats to Coach Sonius on that. They have the same schedule as the boys here in the next couple of days. Uh, they beat Lake Mills, I think it was like 79 to 14 or something like that. It was about a 60 point win, so they're going to have another good season like always. Wrestling and busy man coach Mark Sanger goes right from the dome to football from football season to the wrestling room. Uh, sounds like they have decent numbers out this year. Uh, They start their season tonight. Uh, I believe it's live streamed. I don't remember where it is. This Saturday, they go to Okaboji for a tournament. And then on the 9th, they go to Newman for a quad with Newman, Forest City, and Osage. So make sure you get out there to some basketball games and some wrestling meets this year. Uh, Sanger Legacy Fund. Remember to go to sangerstrong.com to give to the Sanger Legacy Fund. It's in honor of Coach Bob Sanger and Mrs. Linda Sanger. They obviously taught and coached at Britwiss Hancock for many, many decades impacted so many lives. Uh, We're raising money for a kind of an extra booster club for our athletic programs, our activities, and the newly formed Hall of Fame that's coming together. We're going to help fund that as well. And then state championship stuff, we're going to help fund some memorabilia for the football team winning another title. Again, go to sangerstrong.com. Before I get to Jason here, got a couple more things, so bear with me. Uh, My Way Back Wins segment, uh, like always, I do this to give Uh, prior episodes more views get those sponsors more advertising and if someone missed one they they got it now so five episodes ago on episode 23 Jake Kevin and I did another playoff podcast for the football season 
10 episodes ago on episode 18, Russ King, former coach back in the 60s. 15 episodes ago on episode 13, the 1980 Girls State Championship basketball team. 20 episodes ago on episode 8, the mayor of Pella, Don DeWard. Just ran into him and talked to him the other day. And 25 episodes ago on episode 3, the legendary Denny Brum, who called lots of Jason's touchdowns back in the day. So if you haven't uh, seen any of those or you want to rewatch one, I'll have all those links on the podcast tonight. Uh, the one guy I mentioned, Russ King, I want to bring this up one more time and see if I can get any traction on this. Uh, he won a national championship at Northwestern College in 1973 as the D coordinator, and each player and coach got a national championship watch instead of a ring, and it was stolen from him in a home invasion back in the 80s, and he mentioned to me on the podcast that he has thought about getting it replaced, so I talked to a uh, trophy and awards company, and I asked them showed them pictures say can you guys replicate this they can almost exactly replicate it for us but it's about 650 bucks and i was just throwing it out there to see if anyone who remembers russ or just thinks this is a good story and wants to help out to get a hold of me and let me know if they want to help out at all i'd love to help russ out he's a super nice guy and i was glad i got to do the podcast with him so one last thing jason thanks for being patient i have a new sponsor tonight Daniels Auto Collision in Charles City is a new sponsor, like I said. Owner Jason Daniels is a 1990 West Hancock grad. Whether you need a minor fix-up or complete collision repair, Daniels Auto Collision is North Iowa's premier auto body shop. They'll have your vehicle back on the road looking better than new. With over 30 years experience and all major insurances accepted, why take your chances with any other dealership than Daniels Auto Collision? Call them at 641 220 3805 or email them at danielsautocollision at gmail.com. Check them out at danielsautocollision.com. All right, enough of me talking. It's going to be mostly you from now on. So, uh, graduated in West Hancock 2000, first one of the new millennium, you could say. Uh, what are, where are you at today? What's keeping you busy? Uh, my, my kids, my family, uh, outside of work. Um, my wife and I are expecting baby number three in three months, and oh, we will have great. three kids under the age of four. And doing the math, I'm now 40, so I'm not a spring chicken. It's it's a little bit harder the older you get, but my wife and I decided to wait a little bit later on in life. Um, so chasing family around, uh, trying to be the best husband I can, and then uh, around those hours, around the more important things, uh, work, um, running the business. And um, I'm actually... Uh, teacher like you online. Uh, I teach for DMAC still and a school out of St. Paul, Concordia, St. Paul. So wearing a lot of different hats and um, staying busy, just just yeah. doing the best to fill my time, I guess. Yeah. What do you teach through those two schools? Uh, sport management and intro to business. When I was in person, I taught a few other uh, courses, uh, international business, business math, but uh, since I've gone to the online format, it's it's been intro to business and sport management, just those two. So got a good stranglehold um, on them just because I've taught them for, gosh, you know, five, six years now. But those are the two classes. Yep. Did that all pick up a lot with COVID? A lot of people need to pick up <sighs> online schooling instead of in person? Uh, y- yes, but also the in-person <laughs> Um, professors wanted to take a lot of those classes. So it kicked a lot of the pe- uh, online instructors out. Oh, Fortunately, yeah. I, I kept my classes. I, I still have them. So, you know, barring the future um, and knock on wood, I'll keep them. But you never know from semester to semester because um, I'm definitely not tenured. It's just a contract gig from one uh, semester to, to the next. But yeah, um, yeah it's, a, it's a fun job. I enjoy it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Well, if that ever falls through, you have a thing called Farmer Jim, right? You want to tell us yeah, about that yeah. a little bit? Explain that. Yep. Um, that's that's a it's a fitness business that I started when I moved to Los Angeles. When I moved to Los Angeles, I did that uh, for the gal I married. I, I, she went to school with my cousin. And to make a long story short, maybe we'll get into it in a little bit. She got a job out in Los Angeles. She's an attorney working for a larger firm. And then there's me having lived in Iowa my entire life. I did not want to go to Los Angeles. If she sees that, she'll know that. She won't be disappointed in this. I'm not a Los Angeles guy. So I went out there, 
And I'm like, what am I going to do? I was still teaching at the time, but I'm like, I need to do something else. I can't just be twiddling my thumbs and I can't stand traffic. So I'm not going to go out and drive around. I can only hike so much. So I started spinning my wheels. And then I got together with uh, my cousin and her husband. We went out to eat one night at um, an Italian restaurant. We're sitting down, turning over ideas. And then he and I started talking, you know, you grew up on a farm, you know, you grew up in sports or everything to you moving your body. I'm like, be a personal trainer. I'm like, yeah, be a personal trainer. Like every other person trying to get on the big screen out here, you know, I'm like, that is so cliche. And then we talked more. What if you tied it into the farm? And it started out with, he, he said, Hey, what about calling it farmer fit? I'm like, that's a brilliant idea. You know, I can hold on to my roots, you know, out here, I'd be a little bit different. And then a couple of weeks went by and uh, started playing on words and I'm like farmer gym gym and it all came together and I started training people in parks and at their houses out in Los Angeles um, the tagline was your environment is your gym and your body is the machine we would only use dumbbells body weight stuff like that so started picking up clientele and then uh, wrote a couple uh, fitness books and that gained a little bit more traction um, and then my wife realized that you know Jason really does not like it in <clears throat> Los Angeles so we're let, let's go ahead and make a move she's from Tallahassee Florida she's six generations deep and I I love Tallahassee every time I came back and visited I'm like you know what I could see myself there you know I probably probably not uh gonna get you back to Iowa she loves Iowa it's just she's not a cold weather gal and yep. there there's the hiccup there okay she, she loves Iowa but she's not a cold weather gal so Tallahassee's a little bit warmer so she got a job there and I took farmer Jim from Los Angeles down to Tallahassee. We had two acres of land. So I was training people essentially on an acreage, almost like a farm. I'd put dumbbells, barbells, everything all over the place. We'd have people coming and going. Neighbors probably thought I was absolutely insane, <laughs> but it built from there. Then we moved to Atlanta because she got her dream job. And then that's when it switched mainly to an online training forum where I'm writing programs, doing online training for people from throughout the country. We were up in Atlanta for about three years. Now we're back in Tallahassee for good. So it's a good thing it's with the online format. So I'm just training people online uh, using that same theme. Your environment is your gym, wherever you want to train, uh, whether that's in your basement, your garage, and your body is the machine. Uh, I, I'm a big believer in barbells, dumbbells, kettlebells, things of that nature. That's what I use. And that's what my clients use. So that's a little bit about former gym, its origins and, and kind of where we are uh, right now. So that definitely uh, keeps me busy. And it's, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. I tell people I'm a knuckle dragging Neanderthal and I get paid to do it. So it's pretty cool. You said you wrote a few books on fitness. Are those yeah. accessible anywhere? Yes, uh, there are. Uh, there are 10 and nine of them are on Amazon. And so um, they're, they're all it's different types of programming. Um, so if, if you want to get your sweat on uh, you, after this, I'll send you a couple of links. I'm going to send you one, Dan. Perfect. Yep. I, I need cool. something. Uh, I was going to tell you before we recorded uh, this teaching gig, teaching nine-year-olds, uh, there's days I'm just like, yep, Mountain Dew time instead of uh, <laughs> time, but need some kind of motivation, but I always justify my actions or lack thereof based on, my day so hey you're a busy guy you've got kids you got family it's 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 not easy yep and i was just telling jason before we recorded one of my seven-year-olds opened up a running dishwasher so i was a few minutes late getting on here i was like yeah we had to deal with that that's just a typical thursday around here so yeah, no yeah yep so uh let's go back to iowa you said your wife yep. bouncy around the country but yep. Iowa's out of the question but go back to brit canal west hancock yeah what stands yeah. out from your childhood your friends teachers what'd you do around town sports oh, and well immediately I mean I'm gonna go to sports um I mean that that that's kind of what we where we grew up mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's almost a prerequisite if you didn't do it that's absolutely fine I mean find your niche do it do do you but um everything in my life has hinged around that in some sort of capacity part part of the reason I have former gym is because of my roots that the, the sports uh, environment the just uh, there's such a correlation with fitness and sports that I mean my livelihood is based on the community I grew up in the, the, the mm -hmm. sports you know that blue collar work for what it is you want to do 
Um, so just every, my, my fabric is everything that, you know, the, the Brit, the West Hancock community uh, is, and, and I love that. That's something that will never go away from me. There are things Coach Sanger has, has or back in the day, taught me that still ring in my head. I can think about them daily and I use them. I use them with my clients. It, it's absolutely awesome. Um, that's kind of a broad answer to what you just asked. More specifically, like so many people, I mean, going to the pool, hanging out with friends. Uh, I would go to Justin and John Sharbanoff's house all the time. I probably ate their poor, uh, ate, you know, how much money's worth of food <laughs> out of their house. I mean, in high school, we went to the Klein's place. Um, just, I'm guessing what everybody does now, you know, pool, sports, you know, going to friends' places, you know, probably getting into a little bit of trouble. I remember teepeeing and smashing pumpkins a, a few times. And you now thinking back on it, God, that was kind of me being a punk, you know. But I mean, I've got nothing but awesome thoughts on everything that I grew up with. And um, there are many days I miss it. But, you know, now I'm 40. I've got my family, um, a family of my own. And you know, I'm going to hope to get them as back as much as possible. It hasn't been much. I haven't been back home, home where I grew up, my farm, uh, the Brit West Hancock area in two years, we'll be going back there for Christmas. So just going back to the farm, I'm hoping for snow. I'm going to take my son out. We're going to go hopefully snowmobile, snowmobile in the 1979 snowmobile that we have. But um, I've got nothing but the fondest memories. Tony Hansen was my neighbor. I grew up uh, on a farm. Yep. And he and I would always go back and forth to each other's house and, and play growing up. But just being outside on the farm, gosh, you know, I, I miss that. Tallahassee has a lot of that vibe, but not the complete, that, that, that openness, that, that free, just pure nature. So I miss, I miss that uh, many times. Um, so nothing compares to your hometown, especially I mean, you can't replicate it anywhere. No, 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 you can't. Uh, you, you, you can't. And it's a place I'll always call home. And, um, whenever I'm talking about it, um, to whomever it might be, uh, you know, I grew up on a farm and, and something I'll, I'll always say is, you know, yeah, I grew up in a farm on Iowa, but in Iowa, but believe it or not, most people don't grow up on a farm. I just happen to have done it and I'm happy to have had that. And then football is always a, another conversation piece. Um, when, when I'm talking to people, not from where we're from. Yep. Yep. I'm sure oh, oh well, another thing I meant to say, I probably helped your dad's retirement fund. Cause I ate a lot of pizza. I know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we ate a lot of pizza. So hopefully yep. your dad's got a nice house somewhere and he's relaxing because I think we, we helped his retirement fund. <laughs> well, if he's watching this sometime, uh, he has said for years that if they would have stuck it out another 10 years at Mark's Pizza, that's exactly where he'd be right now. But he got tired of six nights a week behind the oven, so they switched yeah. gears, and uh, yeah. they've done well. Just, yeah, they, they he did 18 years of that, and I still, 20 years later, they it's been 20 years now, this coming July, that they got out of Mark's Pizza, and okay. I, I go back to Hobo Days every year, and that's what I talk about with probably 15 different people every single time I'm back home is Mark's Pizza memories, so. Yep. Yep. Oh, yep. Stay absolutely. Stay full of my childhood. Absolutely. Yep. yep. The reason my mom called me Husky, we had pizza about five nights. <laughs> yeah, it was a good time. All right, we're gonna get to your your sports here in just a second. Uh, we got to get sure. to a few sponsors though. Yep. Uh, First State Bank and Brit takes pride in their community based values and wants to be your bank. They take pride in serving the Eagle Nation communities. They personalize uh, your banking products to meet the needs of your busy life with free internet banking, their mobile banking app with mobile deposit. Try bill pay services. Uh, First State Bank backs our Eagles 24 seven, just like their service to you. First State Bank, whether it's personal business, real estate or agriculture loans, they have the products to serve you best. You can bank on the go with FSB's 24 seven convenient online banking, account inquiry, make transfers and bill pay. Those are all free services. Check out First State Bank and Brit. Again, try their mobile app with all the conveniences of their online banking. While you're supporting the Eagles, you can check your accounts, make transfers, and pay those bills. That's First State Bank in Brit. And then another sponsor, uh, you mentioned him already. Justin Charbonneau reached out to me when I said that I was having Jason on as a guest. Uh, he mostly wanted to sponsor to make sure that we honor Wang's <laughs> birthday tomorrow, December 3rd. 
and bring up that Brett had mad dancing skills and would always oh. get caught doing stupid stuff by Coach Zanger, which oh, I can man. attest he to. He had that's such bad luck. Years. Brett had bad luck. <laughs> yeah. Happy um, early birthday, Brett. Yep. Any uh, so about a dancing story and then something about running around in the country and someone approached you guys in a car and Ooh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you that story off air but uh the dancing story Justin told me yep <laughs> oh uh, yeah that 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 that's a doozy um but but Brett's story he had bad luck but if it, Brett is absolutely hilarious Brett was absolutely hilarious he was a great friend he he and I grew up together we went to Canal Christian School and uh he's freaking hilarious uh, you know we haven't touched base much in the in the past you know, many years, but gosh, he was hilarious. But when we were in high school, a bunch of the guys would come out on Monday night. And at the time it was WWF, it's WWE now, or whatever you call it. I haven't watched uh, pro wrestling in quite some time, but we would always watch WWF and we'd always play, you know, video games on Nintendo 64, James Bond, NFL Blitz and stuff of that nature. Well, WWE, there was a wrestler called Triple H and he, he would do this dance and he had a towel on. He, he would always dance and just if you want to look it up on YouTube, Triple H, and he would dance. Well, <laughs> I still remember this because I was right there. I, we were in the locker room, and I remember, I remember this plain as day. I don't know why Brett did it, but I believe it had to do with that. I was watching Coach Sanger. He, he was walking, and all of a sudden he stops, just, just, just stops and stares. I'm like, what, what is going on, Mr. Sanger? I didn't say anything to Mr. Sanger. I don't know if Mr. Sanger even saw me. He was just, he just stood there. It's probably, you know, five, eight seconds. Nothing more than that. He didn't say a word. Then, I, if I'm not mistaken, he kind of gave one of these mm-hmm. and kept walking. I come around the corner. Brett, there were two wood beams. Brett was sprawled out and he had like his towel on and he was dancing. And Mr. Sanger caught him dancing, like doing this triple H dance. And it was just, I mean, is we all do these type of things. That's what we would do in in weight rooms. We're, we're goofy, um, and and Brett just unfortunately got caught. But no, Brett was so funny. I, I, one more story about Brett. My junior year, uh, my, my arm at school went through went through a window and it tore. I had to get a ton of stitches. I remember that. And after I got the stitches, I, I came back to get my book so that I could uh, do homework. And I walked into the locker room and nobody saw that I had walked in. Well, I heard Brett talking to somebody. <laughs> he was trying to convince somebody that they were going to like amputate my arm. And I mean, I don't know how far it got, but the person was like, what, what, what? how serious is this? And then I come walking around the corner. I'm like, Lang, what are you talking about? I- I'll still always remember that. But Brett, Brett is absolutely hilarious. Yep. And yep. Um, yeah, that, that I am going to correct you. Cause I was a diehard WWF guy back in the late nineties. I think that okay. was Val Venus you were talking about. Well, wait, is that Val Venus? Val it wasn't triple eight. Yep, he had a well, okay. Then, 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 okay, yep. thank you. Then what? What was tri- Triple H was uh, gener- was it Generation X? Yes. They did. Yep. Oh, it yep. was okay. Yes, yep. thank you. Okay, okay, yep. yeah, that was the dance. But yeah, with the towel, you know what I'm talking yep. about. Val Venus. Yep. I, that, yeah, I never missed a Monday night. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Back then, with uh, us. Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, um, Mankind, King Shamrock. Yes. Undertaker, Kane. We could just turn this podcast into WWF. Oh man, that, there you go. There's another idea down the road. Oh, Created it. Right, right. Absolutely. But okay, yeah. thank you. For Do- that. Yeah. Dozens of people will be excited for that one. So yeah. <laughs> dozens. Yes. Yeah. Um, so Holly Lang and John Lang are friends of mine from way back in the day, youth group and stuff. Good Holly's people. Holly's birthday is December 10th. And I set an alarm for 11.59 p.m. the night before. And when that alarm goes off, I send Holly a happy birthday message. Her kids, so Brett and the three girls, have had a contest for years. Who sends their mom the first message or the second, third, fourth message? I jumped in on that because I'm there. I always say I'm Holly, the son that Holly always wanted. And, oh, my uh, gosh. I, every time at the end of that, her birthday, the kids message and say, who was first, who was second? And it's always Danny Crawl was first, and they all reply back, "I hate Dan Crawl." Is what they always. Do. <laughs> They're good people. Oh, I no, love the links. We, we would always go over to Brett's for like slumber parties, and there'd be eight of us. John would wrestle us. He'd beat the heck out. John was oh, yeah. so strong. That dude was strong as an ox. He was country strong. 
Yep. Oh my gosh. I sat with him at the state championship in the semifinal game. I'm like, John, you're, you're more ripped than you were 15 oh, years ago. And that, he I, I wouldn't mess with him to this day. Nope. Oh, nope. he's so strong. Yep. Yeah. Oh, boy. So anyway, we, uh, pro wrestling, Brett Lang stories. We could be all day here. So <laughs> let's get into your track. Uh, you were a, yeah. quite the, the uh, athlete in track. Um, I just want to quickly go through a couple of your track seasons here. Uh, Cause you guys had a lot of success. Uh, your sophomore season was in 1998. You guys placed mm-hmm. 11th in class 2A. Uh, Zach Osterkamp made it to the finals in the 100. Tony Ritima was third in the 110 hurdles. The four by eight finished eighth. The four by one qualified for the finals without you. But it sounds like you stepped in for the finals. Is that how that, I can't remember. That, it's yeah. Kind of confusing reading about that, but. Um, that, that year. God, I don't remember a ton about that year, but yeah, I was on the relays that year. Yeah. Yep. And that was back when you didn't have, you didn't have districts to get to state. You could qualify Correct. throughout the year and then you could switch guys in and out. You it would qualify your school for that relay or that event. And you could trade yeah, guys. It was the wild, there. wild west. You just threw, threw people in. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. So it was you, Tony Ritima, Zach mm-hmm. and Stripling and Ronnie Lampers were the five that made up that yeah. foursome. Uh, stripling in the four by one. I put a couple exclamation points after that. That dude was massive. That dude's like, it's like a grizzly bear. It's like a grizzly bear running. Like you don't want to get in the way of that. Like, yeah, he, that he was an athlete. I mean, if people don't remember, if people don't know that guy, that guy was an athlete. I mean, that, 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 that class was so dang talented. I mean, I almost feel bad saying names because they were they were also talented. You had Evans, you had Ostracamp, you had Don, you had Jeff Anderson on the line, obviously yep. strip that they were, I, I mean, I'm going to be biased to, to being around um, my, my time, but man, there'd be some large hardware, additional hardware uh, running up and down those halls. If they didn't have, if they were, if they were under two way, there's too much talent. You know, there's just too much talent. West Hancock is chock full. It's incredible to see the talent that comes up and down those hallways. And then when you pair that with great coaching, it's ridiculous, but yep. you know, back to those athletes, if, you know, if they didn't have, if they didn't have to go against towns that had malls and airports. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that was a joke we always had back in the day. It's like, dang, you know, they got an airport, they got stoplights, you know, but man, there was so much talent. There'd be, there'd be other, there would be other much larger hardware. If, if they were uh, competing in, in smaller classes, they were so talented in stripling. He's a bad man. I'm sure yeah. he still is, but yeah, he was a bad man. And like yeah. I said, grizzly bear, you don't want to get in the way of that. Uh-uh. My parents at Mark's pizza, my dad would be busy Friday nights making pizza, but he would always say a couple of those seasons where stripling was playing, he would try to get my mom to make pizzas that night. So he could go watch and he goes, I would only watch him. Like I, I just zoned in on him and I just loved watching him pull down the line and just nasty, fast, big, yep. nasty. So yeah, yep. um, four by four got third, Adam Klein, Matt Buns, Ronnie and Tony. Uh, you were in the four by two, you guys qualified for the finals, uh, Osterkamp, Stripling, Ronnie, uh, but Ronnie had to sit out due to running or being in too many events. And then Trinity Dawn stepped in, but it sounds like he got disqualified. Uh, do you remember what happened on that at all? You there? Cut out there briefly, Dan. Uh, I was talking about the four by two. Uh, yep. Can you hear me? Yep. Uh, you yeah, I can. You bet. The finals, but then Ronnie had to sit that out. Yep. So Trinity Dawn stepped in, and then uh, there was a yep. disqualification. Do you remember the DQ at all? I, I don't. I, I what little I remember is it just being an unfortunate circumstance. I mean, those those things happen all the time, Mike. My junior year, um, it happened to the team that that won state, Dyersville Beckham. They were in the four by one. It was them, us, and uh, I believe it was West Line had the top times going in. And I, it was uh, Dyersville Beckman, their their first guy dropped the baton. I mean, it, it it unfortunately happens, and it just it just so happens to us. Uh, it happened to us. Um, just un- unfortunate. Uh, Miss handoff happens to everybody. So, yep, yeah. Yep. yep. So, uh, before we move on to your last couple track seasons, I want to yeah. bring up Mary Joe's Hobo House and catering. And Britt has been a huge Wes Hancock supporter for over 28 years now. 
and they also uh, did some of the team meals uh, during the playoffs. Uh, really happy to see them do that. Uh, Travel Iowa voted the Hobo House as having one of the 10 best burgers in Iowa. Visit Mary Jo's Hobo House for lunch and breakfast every day at 72 Main Avenue South. Call them at 843-3840 for takeout. That's Mary Jo's Hobo House with Linda and Mary Jo Hughes, and they also cater, of course. And then uh, Mike and Brianne Ewing of Ewing Funeral Home and Monument Company with locations in Britt, Kanawa, Clarion, Belmont, and Dows. Mike's a 1998 graduate of Wes Hancock, and his family's been privileged to care for the communities of Britt and Kanawa since 1977. You can find them online at ewingfh.com or on Facebook. Um, call them at 843-3839 or 762-3211. That's Ewing Funeral Home and Monument Company. Uh, these guys have been sponsoring this pretty much from the beginning and, and been so generous. So I just always want to thank my sponsors um, every time I get a chance. So junior season, uh, that would have been 99. Uh, this was a great season. You guys won the North Iowa Conference title. Uh, yeah. In the conference meet, you beat Four City 104 to 83. So it wasn't really even close per se. Yeah. Uh, your four by one team set the conference record. Uh, you were second in the long jump. You were first in the 200 and first in the 400. So you took home some, some good hardware. Uh, I found a quote in the newspaper from Coach Sanger. Uh, he said, I told them what happens, happens. Just make sure the effort is there. I felt really good about their effort. Went after, we got quoted afterwards. Uh, I, I love finding Coach Sanger quotes when I'm doing research for this type of stuff. Yeah. It's just, I, I can hear his voice while I'm reading the yes. quote from the paper. And he never, you know, I mean, that was a simple, I told the guys what happens, happens, make sure your effort is there. Simple, but coming from that guy, it, that it, meant it, everything it, to us. Power, power. No, it, it's just powerful. He, I mean, he's, I unfortunately never, got to speak with him much after graduation, just a few encounters and, you know, people's lives, they just go off in different directions, but he is one of the few human beings that impacted me. And it was certain things he said, one of which will, I will never forget. I, I can think about, I, I, I can say without a shadow of a doubt, I remember this more than once on a weekly basis. <clears throat> I know we're talking track, but it was, it, it was the night of his 200th victory mm -hmm. and we were playing Belmont and it was in the first half. I had fallen on the ball. I'd gotten the wind knocked out of me and I was, I was, I was a little bit tired and we were on offense and I remember him going, he yelled it just in that, in that scene, Harley, let's go. I will never forget this, mm -hmm. you know, went out there and, and that changed my mindset the rest of that game. But I still distinctly remember that. I remember what happened on that play. And I mean, just as you said, something simple in that voice, just, you know, you got goosebumps just thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, just he, he was he's a different type of human being. And that's freaking awesome. He was he's incredible. So, yeah, yep. Yep. a lot of success on the track as well as football yep. field uh, that year. Ninety nine. You guys were sixth in class two A with twenty one yeah. points. You mentioned Beckman Dyersville. They were the state champs yeah. at thirty four. Uh, you qualified for the 100 and the 200, but you didn't run in those events. Uh, what I found in my research, yeah, Coach yeah, yeah. said that he wanted to keep you fresh on the relays uh, because the way, you know, how he mapped out, you know, meets and wanted to get the most points out of everything. Uh, he said you guys had a goal yeah. to win it all. And by moving you around was going to better your chances of maybe bringing home some hardware. Um, he said, in hindsight, maybe you could have gotten second. Um, in those events if he stuck with that lineup but he said the goal and you guys agreed was to win state as a team um, obviously you didn't get quite there but I, I love the mindset of we're going to yeah. sacrifice individual accolades <clears throat> for the team um, I, I love that mindset so you ran in the four by four and you guys got fifth got some team points four by two took second and you were quoted in the paper saying Beckman has all seniors on this relay this year's theirs next year is our year so I, I love yeah. that that attitude uh, going into your senior year. Uh, four by one got third, four by eight was six, the medley placed eighth. And I believe that was the era where only the top six got team points. So the, nowadays eighth would at least get you a point. Yep. Um, Osterkamp, Zach was third in the hundred. Josh Evans was ninth in the disc. Uh, what do you remember about this season being pretty close to bringing home a trophy? Oh gosh. I, 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 
that was a stacked team. It, it, it really was. I mean, the, we had so many, we had, we could, God, that team could fly. I, I know it's changed since then, but that four by two time when we got second at the time, it was the third fastest time in the state in two way. You know, we, we, we could move, but man, that class, that two way class w- was stacked. They had a guy by the name of Ryan Kedley. He may still hold the, the state record in the 400. Uh, the kid by the name of Ed Reesberg, he ran at Iowa state um, that West lion team in football and track. God, I mean, th- there were some good matchups that, 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 that's where I want to go with that. We had, we had a team that could run right there with everybody else, but um, just didn't fall our way. And that's life. You got to pick yourself up and, and move on. I'm sure Mr. Sanger would, would have probably said something like that. He probably did say something like that at the mm-hmm. time. I was probably a little frustrated, you know, going in there hoping for first, second or third, but didn't end up that way. But Cal, it was fun running with those guys. <clears throat> Um, all of them. I mean, even I can think about track practice, you know, run with Zach Osterkamp, just doing 200 uh, fart licks is what we called them. But uh, we, we had a, a fun team, fun, fun team to run with. Yeah. Yep. I, I put down uh, Corey Trenary, Stripling, Adam Klein, yep. Travis Benton, Matt yep. Buns. Yep. Mike Rasmussen. Uh, Mike was another one of those pretty big. I, I, that's players. just where I was going to go. There's another grizzly bear who you don't want, uh, you don't want to get in the way of. He, very akin to, to Mike Stripling. Um, yeah, if, if you don't know about Rass, he was a big dude and he could scoop that entire Rass family is uh, great, great. Uh, they're great athletes and boy, Mike could, Mike could scoot. And he was a big dude. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And they, they have that mentality of just get the job done. Nothing fancy. Just that, do it. That's absolutely. I, I played with Aaron and I had a lot of fun with Aaron. I wouldn't yeah. say as much fun cause he was so intense, but I, after the passion, <laughs> boy, enjoy how he was even in college too at central so yeah. uh, before we get to your senior season uh the jay hiscock state farm team in brit is a p- proud supporter of west hancock and the sanger legacy fund they can help you with all your insurance needs including auto home life farm business and renters insurance for a free quote or review give jay or Lindsay a call at 843-3563 go eagles and thanks to jay and his team they hopped on did 15 of these episodes all right senior season 2000 obviously the year you graduated okay. Uh, you guys were 27th as a team that year, so you, you lost yeah. some, uh, the quantity of runners kind of went down a little bit, but you still had some pretty good guys run around the yeah. track. Uh, not quite the success you had, but a lot of younger guys were stepping in that year. Um, and then uh, had kind of a rainy day at Drake on that Friday. Uh, you want to talk about that a yeah. little bit? Yeah, that was just a depressing day. You you get excited for, uh, you know, Drake, rel- Drake relays. It's usually not good weather, but when you're at Drake, uh, state time. Yeah, you're used to good weather. You're excited about it. Yeah, it was probably 50s, 60s, raining. It just wasn't a good vibe. You got to run in anything, everything. But yeah, that was that was one of the um, not so fun, I, I guess, times down there. Um, but you know what? I, again, you got to deal with uh, the cards you're dealt. So you got to play with the cards you're dealt and. Just yeah. to say that you made it to Drake, though, because you get to run against 3A and 4A schools. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a neat honor to say that you got to do it regardless. It, of, they have such a cool thing. It, that was always a really fun uh, fun thing to partake in, absolutely. Yeah. Yep, yep. So uh, you guys ran in the 4x1, 4x2, 4x4. Uh, you were on the 4x2 team that placed fourth, so that's where you got some of your team points. Uh, it was you, Mike Rasmussen, Gay Browns, and Adam Klein. Uh, quite the variety of dudes there, just body wise <laughs> and personality yeah. and everything. Uh, yeah, a little, little bit of everything there. Um, what can you wrapping up track here? We're going to get to football here in a little bit. Yep. What can you take away from Coach Sanger, Coach Haugie? We've already touched a little bit on that, but anything else that you want to? Uh, yeah, and Bo- Coach Boozman. Uh, Coach Coach yeah. Boozman uh, was there too. You 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 did a piece on him. You had a um, uh, you had a spotlight on him. I thought he did a great job. Yeah. Uh, you both did. Um, but yeah, coach Boosman was there too. Uh, I just remember I probably had too much fun in track now thinking back on, it, you know, um, I definitely took it serious, uh, seriously because, uh, I, I love track. Um, but I probably, I probably had too much fun. It was uh, for running. A lot of people like you like to run. Yeah. I, I love to run. It, it, it's fun for me. But I, I had a blast. Again, the guys I was uh, running with were, were awesome. You mentioned a lot of their names, Rass, Klein, 
they were they were awesome teammates and um we 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 enjoyed one another's company when we weren't running 300s and and wanting wanting to puke so yeah. Yeah. um Did and coach sanger i mean oh, go ahead what's that no go ahead i'll, uh, I'll call in a minute i was just gonna say i mean throughout this is tw episode 28 now i mean enough things have been said about coach sanger all great and you can go on forever but i mean what more can you say about the man I mean, not just his, his accolades but him as a human being just him getting the most out of you him setting your mind straight him setting you on the right path I, an, another singer story it was it was the senior year early on I, I had pulled my I, I pulled my quad not my hamstring everybody pulls their hamstring but I pulled my quad and I, I was frustrated. I weighed a little bit more my senior year. I think I was around 205. Probably it probably went down during track, but I weighed a little bit more because I spent too much time in the weight room working on my upper body. Stupid, foolish. Now thinking back, why would you do that? But I remember those things, but I still had a really good 200 time. It, at the time, I want to say it was top 10 in 2A. And I was frustrated. I was mad. Coach Sanger looked at me. He goes, what are you complaining about? You know, he, he set me straight. He goes, you work your butt off, you get better, you go out there, but stop complaining. You know, other people would rather have that. So just stop, pick your head up. I mean, stuff like that. It's just like, that's, that's part of the reason why he's a legend. I mean, set you straight the right way. He loves you to death, but I mean, he's going to tell you, you know, man to man, this is the way it is. You know, it was awesome. He, he was an incredible, incredible man. Haugi, uh, coach Boozman. Um, I'll, oh, coach Boozman, whenever I, if I were anchoring the four by two, coach Boozman would, would always be in the corner. We'd have a little conversation before I got the handoff, like clockwork. And I'll never forget that. He was always encouraging and, um, mm -hmm. always there, always there. So, uh, West Hancock has had some incredible coaches and I think most people recognize that, but if they don't, um, you know, they need to check themselves because <laughs> we've been spoiled. Yep. Did you guys ever have official puke practices? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, six, man. 600 and 300 day. Absolutely. Yep. I remember we, we would bug Coach Sanger and, you know, if how he would still be, yo, we have a puke practice, that would be 300s and 600s. Uh, it was probably something beyond that, too. But I remember 300s for the sprinters, 600s yep. for the distance guys. And, oh, man. Yep. Puke practice. Absolutely. Yep. I was a, a weight boy, so I never like threw disc or shot, but I was one of those guys that coached. Oh, like, you got the <laughs> like, Yep, I'll be there. And we'd be doing those few practices and we'd be doing them like a bunch of us that were just there to practice to get in shape yep. for football. And we'd be like, all right, who's sticking the finger down their throat today to get this over with? And <laughs> rock, paper, scissors or whatever. And someone would just do it. And then he'd see that and be like, was yeah. that ever you? Did you ever get it? Uh, maybe once. I can't remember. Okay. You think I would remember that, but I don't, but I just remember the, who's going to do it today. And then he'd be like, you idiots, one more and call it a day. Or we'd run down third street and back <laughs> one more time or something like that. But yeah, we had a lot of fun in track and I, I only ran one meet and that was the four by fat where. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Tyler Swenson came out of the blocks. He was six, six. We just thought that would be fun to watch him. He handed it off to Andrew Fetters, who was an all di all district lineman. He gave yeah. it to Darren Kruger, who was an all state like, lineman, six he, two, uh, six three, he, big dude. Yeah, yeah. And then I get the baton. We're going against a couple varsity teams that just wanted extra reps in the four by one. I get the baton, and every other team has finished the race, <laughs> and I have to do that horrible by yourself run down the back stretch, and I get all the sympathy claps from this. Yeah, yeah. It was awful. I told coach, <laughs> I don't ever want to do that again. He goes, Don't worry, you're good. <laughs> So, yeah, that That's was awesome. my pretty much my track experience. But it was one of those crawl, see you in a month at track practice, and you said, "Yes, sir." <laughs> like, yep. oh, wasn't oh, gonna hey, tell hey, him hey. no. So, yep. yeah, it's just you, how you do you, it. You, and yep. uh, yeah, do you did you guys have the shot and di the discus that had the strap around it that you could practice with indoors? I remember I, it was. I, I I don't recall that. Uh. -uh. That thing oh. had to have been from his first state championship in 74 because it was old as can be. And one day we're sitting on the mat on the um, uh, the stage, uh, the old Wes Hancock Eagle mat that's sitting in my garage now. And Darren Kruger was practicing the disc in the gym because it was raining out and the strap broke and it came within about an inch of going right through my shin um, from that, about 30 he, feet away. You would no longer have a leg after that. Oh yeah. my 
goodness. Yeah. So it was that those are some of my track memories. We had we had good times. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on to football now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, Mojo Productions, the new sponsor starting tonight. Uh, Mojo Productions, based in Britt, Iowa, is your full service DJ business, specializes in wedding DJing. Uh, they're fully insured. They give back to the community and they're also a presenter. Uh, they run the Brit car, truck, bike, and tractor nights. Contact Jared at 515 408 1074 or send them a message on Facebook. Uh, those are really good people that are doing what they do. All right, let's get to some football. One thing I was yeah. surprised about, Jason, I didn't know you didn't even play your first two years. You said you went yeah. out for yeah. cross country one year and then didn't do anything your sophomore year. And then luckily yeah. you got roped into playing those last couple of years. And and I, I, I should have played all years. Um, I didn't start to grow until probably my sophomore year. Poor excuse. And that's exactly what it is. It's an excuse. But, you know, I said earlier, I like to run. I really like to run. I'm weird. Yeah, I did cross country my, my freshman year. Most people don't remember that. In fact, I, I barely remember it because I had to message you twice. I'm like, hey, I actually did this. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, it was my, my uh, junior year. I, I started football, uh, started playing football. Um, and not to go into a lot of things, but my, my dad was a pretty good football player. So I know I, at home whenever it's like, you know, hey, you know, football. Football. I'm like, yeah, dad, but you know, I like to, I like to run, you know, you can run in football too. Right. I'm like <laughs> that, that, that's true. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, who was the cross country coach back then? Beth Evans. Okay. Cause they for a while didn't have a program. And then when I was in school, uh, we joined with Garner. Yeah. And then um, several years after that, we jo- started our own program and they still have a, just Wes Hancock program now, but it was with Garner for a little while. I didn't know if that was the case back then or not. Nope. Nope. It was, it was solely, yeah, it was solely West Hancock. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So if uh, your four year span in high school, where if you would have played all four years, yep. uh, you guys were 37 and seven. Sure. Uh, you're the two years you didn't play. They were state champs and semifinalists. And then the two years you played uh, like many years where we were bouncing in that two a area. We'd go seven and two, seven and three. One of those years didn't even make the playoffs, uh, which is just hard to fathom with that group. Of athletes. And it's back to when we were just talking about the class. Um, yep. I, I, again, broken record by now, but that class was stacked. And, yep. you know, one a, a damage would have been done. I mean, Mike Stripling coming around the corner, he would have hurt some people. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying again there were so many good athletes there we had super great athletes in my class and just remember mark all state superman sanger underneath he would have been on that team too so yep. um i mean just speaking in my general vicinity just back to that west hancock athlete i mean it's it's like the movie 300 you just pump out freaking warriors you're in you're out you're in you're out it's yep pretty cool stuff and nowadays with us being class a and being a little bit smaller we would need to rely on some underclassmen yeah, Back yeah. Then, you, you and i played when i was a senior is when we started having to rely on more younger kids but your era yeah. for sure it was juniors and seniors only pretty much for the most part and yeah. a lot of times you waited your turn till your senior year to really get on the field because there was that much depth 60 70 guys on the team yeah uh, it makes a big difference being yes in that it does okay um, but your junior season was 1998, the seven and two season where I call that the best team to never, uh, second best team, I'll say, to never win a state championship or at least make a good playoff run. I'd give the 1991 team that nod. Um, yeah. They lost to Garner in the first round, okay. uh, after beating them in the regular season. But yeah, you guys were right up there. Um, you ran the ball 42 times for 243 yards, scored one touchdown. You had 37 tackles and a sack with an interception and four fumble recoveries on defense. Uh, And again, this team was loaded, stacked. Mm -hmm. Uh, Who are some of the other guys on that team you want to mention? Well, yeah, the names I mentioned previously, but, you know, Rass was on that team. Uh, You know, Mike Rass, you know, my class, you know, Adam Bird was there. Uh, We had had Isaacson, you know, bouncing back and forth within those grades. Zach Osterkamp, I mean, he's going to be one of the fastest guys in the state. He's, yep. you know, he's back there running around. Shoot, we had Zool. I mean, he's got what, two All-State, you know, sons, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um, but we had Jake Zool back there. I mean, the dude was a stud, too. And 
Yeah. There were there was so much talent coming out of that team, and my goodness, um, it was it was fun to play on that squad. I mean, in, in practice, I mean, when you're mixing things up, I mean, at times you're, when you get your 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 bell rung, it's like, man, I don't like playing against these guys because there were some studs that would line those fields and yep. they would play and they would play for uh, the person, uh, the alpha male, Mr. Sanger, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and like I've said in a couple episodes, practice was almost harder than games sometimes because the guys <laughs> you're going against. Oh, absolutely. It's, it was just crazy. The depth we yeah. had was just, it was nuts. Oh, I, I, it, funny story. I, I, I still remember this. We were we were working on special teams. This was my senior year, and you know, going back and forth. And then Sanger's like, "All right, start starting special teams kickoffs." You know, I'm getting ready to go out there. He goes, "Harley, no, you're back. Return." I'm like, "I got to go against the starters." Yeah. I'll never forget that. And oh, I, I'm Josh Trollson. Uh, he came he came down, came around, swiped my foot. Poof, he got me. Um, so I, I still remember that. It's crazy how you remember just these little things that you probably shouldn't remember, but stick out yep. like it were yesterday and it's now two decades ago hard to believe over two decades ago it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's crazy yep it goes fast yeah that, that was your junior season 98 yeah uh, the season that could have been uh 99 you guys yep. are seven and three so that yep. obviously that 10th game means you got a playoff game yeah uh you ran for a hundred 103 times for 756 yards and you had nine touchdowns that season you had a kick return touchdown 58 tackles, a sack, and a fumble recovery. Uh, you guys did not give up a point at home that entire season. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then a, a couple other shutouts in that 98, or a one shutout in 98, plus single digits, you gave up a lot of those games as well. Yeah. Um, your career ended, though, in the first round uh, on the road in the first round playoffs to Iowa Falls, 18 to 15. Yeah. Uh, do you remember kind of the – the, the details of that game uh, did you have some chances right at the end to win it or? yeah I, I I do I remember from the opening kickoff we got the ball at about the 50 yard line it was just a, it was a hard hitting game I mean it was back and forth low scoring hard hitting game um I do remember because it was it was I want to say it was a turning point in the game I Nick Schmidt was was in the backfield with me it was usually me um uh, him Brummer and Nick Nick was a great halfback so quick so dang quick he was strong as an ox too mm -hmm. still it. is I mean from what I see on Facebook um and I learned a lot about football from Nick he's a he he knew his stuff um there there was a play where he went to the side and I still remember looking at this and I'm I'm gonna say he was down almost with almost and I almost think he knew he was down and the refs called a fumble this is Nick was an incredible halfback. I don't think he ever fumbled. And I, I saw his knees down. And so that's why I'm thinking like, oh, Nick's just, all right. They called it a fumble and gave it to Iowa falls. And I was so ticked off and I'm sure Nick could tell you the story on that too. Uh, but yeah, that's something that sticks out to me. Um, I remember it being, I remember it being cold and we, most of our guys didn't wear uh, sleeves, but a lot of the Iowa Falls guys didn't. In fact, I believe most of the team did. And the only reason I remember that aspect was because when I was at Iowa State, Doug Aerosmith was one of my bosses and he ref that game. And he, he remembers telling me, he, he told me the story. He goes, we're so excited to do West Hancock football games. Maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but the Iowa High School Association gets a hold of this. But because we love doing Iowa uh, West Hancock games because we knew what we were going to get. You know, we were going to get some you know tough SOBs. He goes, we went out to that game. We looked at both sidelines. We looked at you guys, knowing how cold it was, and you all didn't have shirts on. We're go, this game's a wrap. That team's going to win. Unfortunately, it didn't go that way. But he goes, you know, he was kind of going along the lines of, you know, that's what West Hancock is. You know, tough SOBs out there doing their thing. So. That was a, a cool story that I'll always remember is one of the one of the referees saying, yeah, you guys, you guys know how to play football. Yeah. And they also probably knew that the way we ran the ball, the game is going to only take about an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. so they're going to get more oh. bang for their buck on their paycheck. So um, it's funny you say that. Um, I don't know if you remember this. It was one of the latest games ever played in the state. It was. Yep. The, the, yep. Uh, over at Eagle Grove, we had to wait until like 1030 at night to play a game because of storms, because uh, all of two way hinged upon that game. If we won, 
we were going to the playoffs. If we lost, we were staying home. So we had to get that game in. So they waited till it was like 1030 at night. So yep. if I'm not mistaken, it was into Saturday early morning when we finished that game. So that was another unique thing about that yep. year. And I think we beat Eagle Grove by, you know, it was like 10, 20, 12, what, whatever it was. It was yep. Yeah. Yes. But I, I, I'll still remember that in that game. And we were in the gym and there's a partition and Eagle Grove was on this side. We were on this side and we talked like we were just sitting there talking to one another because it's like paper thin. And some of the guys, I remember, I don't know exactly what Schubert said, but I remember it was him sitting down there and he'd be talking with one guy, well, you're going to do what? Yeah, it, it's funny just thinking back on it. But yeah, that was another game that really sticks out. Yep. Uh, that was me. October 29th of 99. Yeah, we won on the road to Eagle Grove 21 to 6. Uh, my dad was okay. in, the, in the restaurant and I would be hanging out down in the Pete's place looking at movies or whatever. And he kept checking, hearing on the radio that the game kept getting delayed. Well, he closed down the restaurant, everything's cleaned up. And he looked at me and he goes, do you want to go? I'm like, <laughs> sure. So we got there at awesome. like 1030. Okay. I, I can vaguely remember there was maybe half the parents left. Oh, and a couple yeah. casual fans on each side. It was and like playing a rec game. Yeah, thank you, you for coming. Know. Yeah, it was like yeah. a rec game. It was crazy. You could hear. I don't remember, like, any aspects of the game per se, but I just remember you could hear every pad hitting. You could hear the coaches talking. Yeah. Uh, it, and the, it was, like, clear and almost not even that cold at that point. It almost, like, warmed up a little bit kind of after a storm. It was strange. It was uh, odd. It was kind of a fun game. And it yeah. got us into the playoffs, so all yeah. was good. Um, yep. And you've mentioned this guy, but, uh, Chuck Boozman wanted to sponsor the yes. podcast when he did his episode. I don't know how many months ago now. Uh, he said that he wanted to sponsor an episode and he looked through the list and said, Oh, I'll do the Jason Harley one. Uh, he, uh, wanted to do this for you cause he enjoyed, you know, the track and football and stuff. Uh, so Great I want to thank coach Boozman for giving to the Sanger legacy fund. He's, <clears throat> he's a pretty awesome guy. He was one of my favorites. Yep. And, uh, yep. one thing I wanted to talk about with, the last game against Iowa Falls, yep. the finality of your football career is yeah. just a weird thing. Yep. Um, I yeah. remember in 2004, my senior year, um, our last game was at home. We didn't make the playoffs. We won big and we got back yep. in the locker room. I'm like, I don't want to take these pads off. Like, I don't want to you know, yeah. undress from my football gear because it was going to be the last time. I sat around for probably an hour in the locker room before I finally said, all right, I better shower and get out of here. And I go down to Coach Sanger's office, and him and Coach Boozman are doing stats and calling newspapers. And it's yeah. you know ten ten thirty by that point. And it I I never really fully understood as a player the dedication that those coaches had for the program. And till that night when I was thinking, am I like the last one here? And I'm like, I bet you they're still going to be there till midnight. Just yeah. Boozman mentioned stuff like that in his podcast that like he loved the behind the scenes stuff of the program. It was just it's hard to replicate. So just that, just that last that. night is just, it's a weird, tough yeah. night to go through, honestly, whether it's in the playoffs or regular season or however the season ends when it's done, it's just, you never get that back. Yep. 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 So I want to thank coach Boozman for uh, sponsoring and for everything he's done for us as well. All right. We're going to wrap this up with some cool stories here. Uh, you have been around the block and you have some pretty cool encounters with celebrities. So we're going to do some, uh, dumb luck name, name dropping so it's a lot of dumb luck and it's it's it, it's it's my wife <laughs> yep. uh ucla football yeah work yep I, I worked with their football program um i worked with a i worked with the academic side of basically the players who were going to go to the nfl but let's make sure that they're still playing for ucla uh, Jayon Brown. Um, I don't know if he's still in the league, but he's been, he was in the league for about five years. I, he was one of my guys, uh, Jordan Payton. He was a receiver, uh, for, uh, Green Bay, uh, for some time. Eddie Vanderdose played for the Raiders for a little bit of time, but these were my guys. And I was in charge of making sure kind of, they stayed out of trouble and did their homework and, and stayed eligible. Um, you know, I, I saw all the homework they did. They told me all the stories, some stories that I probably shouldn't have heard. Uh, so yeah, when I was out at, in Los Angeles, in addition to doing farmer gym, I also worked with the UCLA football program and what's really cool, um, you know, being a guy who was never around this, I was starstruck because people would come to campus. A lot of NBA players would, would come to UCLA's campus and, and mm -hmm. practice and get their workouts in. 
Um, I saw Kevin Durant, LeBron James. I worked out in the same uh, fitness center as him. LeBron James went up to my buddy and asked him to use his dumbbells. It was just the wildest thing. I mean, it's seriously crazy. I'm sitting there trying to take like, you know, selfies and it was with LeBron. He had like three or four guys and they had none of it. I got chewed out by one of the guys for trying to take a picture, but yeah, UCLA was an interesting experience. Um, like Denzel Washington would come and, and speak to the football program. Um, P Diddy's son, uh, played on the team when, when I was there. So P Diddy would be, uh, coming in and it was, it was a wild ride. Something that I, things that I will never forget, um, I love that I respect it. I wouldn't want to go back to it, but I mean, it was, it was a pretty, pretty unique, um, pretty unique, interesting time. Oh, there was one more. I don't know if we have a lot of soccer followers. We didn't have soccer going up, but Real Madrid, you know, the Real Madrid soccer team. There's one, there's one night I was waiting to go see some clients in the area. And it was after I, I had taken care of all the studies with the guys. So I went to the gym where some people usually pop up the Real Madrid soccer team was going to play the LA Galaxy the next day. And they were in shooting baskets while also watching Carmelo Anthony practice with his son. So I'm sitting there catching free throws for the Real Madrid soccer team, passing them back and forth. And then Carmelo took some pictures afterwards. So I kind of snuck in there. I'm like, ah, you know, like major dork, like, yeah, and got a picture with Carmelo Anthony. So it was just, it was crazy. Just wild, stupid luck. Uh, yeah. circumstantial times. Yep. Who was the head coach at UCLA at the time? Jim Moore. Uh, it was Mora. Mora. Um, that's what I was yeah, going to yeah, get. That, those, those dark. Uh, I remember first day he popped in, you know, he, he stuck out like, what are you guys doing? All right, cool. You know, thanks. We, he gave the usual coach. He didn't care. He didn't whatever. Thanks. We appreciate being part of the team. You know, that whole spiel. And it's like, oh, yeah. thank you, coach, you know, but you were the man. You know, did, you get a, did you get be like on the sidelines for games then? Or what was it? No, no, I never got to be on the sidelines. No. Yeah. Did they fill the stadium back then? I've seen nope. it kind of sad. No, nope. it, it, it is. Oh, the Rose Bowl is such a cool venue, like such a cool venue, but those sports fans, they're, they're nothing like, you know, Hawkeye, Cyclone, you know, I'm down here in Tallahassee, some nothing like that. It, it, it It's too bad. It, it really is. Pac-12 is completely different. And I was never a fan, like something random, like you go to grocery stores in Los Angeles. So back in Iowa down here, you know, you have your team colors, you have your team logos. It's Florida state cans over here, Florida over here. You're up in Iowa. You got Hawkeyes, you got Cyclones, everything's decked out sports season. You feel it there. You'll, you're lucky if you see a USC, you know, piece of memorabilia, memorabilia over here. You're it's nothing. It's I it drove me crazy. You know, growing up in a sport rich area, it drove me nuts. But um, no, it's yeah. too many other things to do in L.A. for some of these people. But yeah, keep people busy. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Will Farrell. <laughs> yeah, it goes along with that Real Madrid uh, story. My wife got box uh, seats for, for the firm she works for. And we show up, I sit down, and then right next to me, uh, sitting right next to me, there's a little four, uh, three foot wall. Will Farrell is with his fans. He's playing with his kids. He was drinking a beer, and I got a picture of him where he's going like this. So I'm like, Frank the Tank, that is so cool. But <laughs> I was way too wimpy to say anything. You know, he was having a great time with his kids. And you know, it's just cool to see him. He was, he was a normal dad, like you and I would be, but you know, it's just like, that's Will Ferrell, you know? So yeah, it was, it was another one of those. Home Depot afterwards, right? What's yeah. that? He's going to go Yo, to Home Depot afterwards. Yeah, snoop a loop. <laughs> Bath and Beyond the first time. <laughs> uh, I love Will Ferrell. He's good. Oh, um, he, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher the name. The yeah. Bolitnikoff Award? Yeah, the Bolitnikoff Award. Um, so in, in college, each position has their, you know, it's almost like the Heisman trophy of that position. You know, yeah. the, the person the, the best in the nation, uh, my stepfather-in-law is one of the founders of the Bolitnikoff. Bolitnikoff was a receiver for Florida state. He went on to play for uh, the Raiders, but uh, he's one of the co-founders. So, you know, being down here in Tallahassee, it's, it's uh, football loving, you know, having him started that, you know, I've, I've been fortunate to just be on the coattails of that and uh, 
for example, uh, Amari Cooper, a uh, receiver in the NFL, I, my wife and I had dinner with him um, one night. And again, just, I, I, I'm, I'm lucky and, you know, because of my wife and, and her stepdad's, you know, his ingenuity and, you know, you know, his, you know, what he, he started, I, I get to reap the benefits of that, but yeah, Amari Cooper and they have uh, the Bolitnikoff award every year down here in Tallahassee. So they'll always bring in the, uh, the, the receiver who wins it and, you know, give them meet and greet. So it's pretty cool stuff. It's, it's pretty neat stuff. So yeah, if you ever get down here in the March, uh, time frame, come on, I'll, I'll yep. take you with me. You'll be my guest. Yep. Do you get a vote? You should try to get a vote for the award. What's that? You should try to get yourself to be able to vote. For the <laughs> yeah. Let's see. How many Iowa people can I put on this list? Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's got to be some Iowa connection. At least get one vote out of it. So, and then the uh, the one I'm most excited to talk yeah. about, Bobby Bowden. Yeah. That. Um. Back to my step uh, father-in-law. His, uh, his name is is Bob Teal. He was uh, Bobby. If you're not aware, I know you probably are aware he passed away months ago, but he was good friends um, with Bobby Bowden and he would go out to eat with him monthly, go over to his house. And this has happened a couple of times when, when my wife and I would, would visit from Atlanta and be like, Hey, you want to go over to Bobby's house? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. So went over to Bobby Bowden's house and we hung out in his man cave for like a half an hour, just, just talking football with Bobby Bowden. And it just, he was older, but he was sharp, just so sharp. He, he would talk about, you know, the Iowa coach, Co Co Kurt Ferris, you know, he's been here, you know, that, that Campbell, he's just sharp. He would talk about things that he, he knew I'd probably gravitate towards. Cause I told him I'm from Iowa and he goes, Oh, you're probably one of them hard working farm boy. Yes, sir. I am, you know, just sit there. I didn't say a whole lot, but he's got all his his stuff all over the walls, you know, replica this and that from his championships. It was, it was surreal, but yeah, we, we did that for about 30 minutes and it's something I'll never forget. I got a, I got an autographed ball with his name and his wife also wrote her name on it and Bowden on the other mm -hmm. side. So that was um, pretty cool. And I, I, I definitely brought up, you know, sir, you know, I, I played football. So, I mean, I brought up, I, I, you know, where I'm from, I didn't talk about it a lot, but you know, in every conversation, it's, you know, it's part of my fabric. As we started out, you know, football is a way of life at West Hancock. You know, it always comes up when, wherever you are, when you're talking to Bobby Bowden, you know, it's part of the fabric of what we've come up with. Uh, with. So, yeah, that was a, that was a neat experience. Yeah. And I, I have been a big Bobby Bowden fan. I have his autobiography and I've probably read it four or five times and he'd go through a lot of his football yeah. seasons, but so much of it was very, Coach Sanger, like such Ed Thomas, like yeah. where it was more yeah. about helping yeah. kids and being a mentor and stuff like that. And he was a strong man of faith. And I, I just really, uh, it's such a simple read too. I, I guess I could read it in a day or two. And I just like six months later, I'm, I'm going to read it again. Why not? I just take so many things away from it, especially being a teacher and coach as well. And you, I'm you hit the yeah, you, you hit told me that yeah. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's it's almost. I mean, they do all of this on the field, but it's more so about the man that they're making you into, you know, as you said, you know, just instilling that faith within you, making you a better person, a better man. You know, the greats had it. You know, Coach Sanger, you know, Bobby Bowden had it. Um, just looking at, you know, the, the people who you know, he he coached and what they have to say about him. You know, it's, yeah. Yep, yep. I was pretty jealous when you were telling me that story that you got to be in his house. That'd be pretty neat. So, yeah. Yep. Well, we're going to, we're going to wrap this up. I just, I want to thank my sponsors again for tonight. Uh, Jan Rosga and her book, the Hobo House, Ewing Funeral Home and Monument Company, Jay Hiscox Estate Farm, Justin Charbonneau, Brett Lang, kind of, uh, Chuck <laughs> Boozman, First State Bank, Mojo Productions, and Daniel, uh, Daniel's Auto Collision. Uh, I was going to say next up is Dwayne Cook, a two-time state champion, but I'm going to have to bump that one back a month. Uh, he's uh, not feeling real well. Uh, so Rachel Lear is next. And then I have uh, Gene Gunther, Dwayne Cook coming up, the Eisman boys, Candace Wilson, Jeff Nielsen, Bob Horner, John Weiland, Coach Haugie, Anna and Sarah Mallon, another one with Nate Schur, Steve Kelly, Joseph Smith, uh, Mr. Paterud, another one with Kevin Sanger, 
uh, the 2007 football team and Travis Hagan. And one thing I remember, Jason, when you and I were talking months ago, kind of prepping for this, when you saw that list, you're like, holy crap. It's, there are so many amazing athletes, coaches, teachers that have gone through this school system. It's uh, crazy. Almost, and you, I have a list of about 60 other people and teams that I haven't even gotten to schedule out oh, yet. And I'm scheduled yeah. through next August. And it's that list it's, is even crazy, too. It's it's so it's absolutely wild. I mean, I I mean, again, I'm completely biased, but you go to other schools, you know, every few years you got that person who comes up every year. There's multiple people at West Hancock. It's it's crazy. I mean, it truly is just, you know, it's a factory. It's in the coolest way. So, well, my my chiropractor is from Indianola here and uh uh, I've been wearing Wes Hancock clothes like I always do. And she was kind of seeing, there was a shirt with some of the history of the program. She was reading it because I was on my stomach and yeah. she's a Wes Hancock fan now. And she <laughs> would, I'd go back and she'd be like, I saw they won their playoff game. And then they won state, you know, two weeks ago. And she was all yeah. excited. And she was like, I kind of was reading about coach Sanger and that's a small school. She was, I grew up here in Indianola where we're 15,000 people, a couple thousand students. She goes, we don't pipe out athletes hardly at all, you know, you know, except for every couple of years. Like, how are you guys <laughs> at this small school? I'm like, this is a great conversation with my chiropractor. I'll take that. So yeah, it, it yeah, is yeah. mind blowing the just all state or all American state nice. championships uh, between state champions and state runner ups team wise. I think we're up to like 43 now or something like that between first and second place finishes as a team in certain every sport. It's yeah. just blows my mind. So, so cool. It's, yeah. it, it's really cool. And it's, um, you know, it, it's, it starts with, you know, the leaders and what they instill in, 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 in us as youth. And then we take that, we build it. Yeah. A lot of it happens with genes too. We've got good genes running through yep. that community, but when you combine the good genes with that good coaching, you know, it gets started early. Yep. I mean, it's a, it's a perfect storm for, well, if you walk around that high school, see all the banners, see all the plat, see everything. Yep. There you go. Yep, there's a lot of communities out there with kids with good athletic ability and genes, but they're not getting the results that we are over in Britain Kanawha. So, yeah, uh, like always, uh, I always save the last little bit here. Do you have any other people we miss? Teachers, coaches, classmates, teammates that you want to shout out before? Oh we... man, well, I, I I'm gonna say hi to my parents. I haven't brought them up. Mom, Dad, um, you know I appreciate everything that uh, you gave me growing up too. So um, I definitely want to give them a shout out. Uh, Don't see them nearly as much as I'd like. Um, Life is crazy, but they deserve a shout out because they had to put up with my crap growing up. So (laughs) still, still have some crap with me, but um, yeah, shout out to them too. You bet. All right. Well, thanks for coming on, Jason. I appreciate it. And go. And thank you. What you're, what you're doing is really cool, man. I mean, you're you're helping keep a community together you know we can see what other people are doing that's really cool so salute to you man sitting here in indianola iowa you're in tallahassee florida we can talk (laughs) west hancock it's fun so yeah man all right man go eagles appreciate you thank you